Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. I'm going to be giving you direct evidence of gold and silver price manipulation. And that manipulation takes the shape of a hawk swooping in to strike gold and silver. Let's explore. <laughs> Most of you may have been following the news. The Federal Reserve has come out of its meeting in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and that hawk has come out to speak. Jerome Powell strikes a very hawkish tone in his much-anticipated speech in Wyoming, and we're going to talk about that in this video and how it's manipulation indeed, because those of you who've been saying for quite some time about the Federal Reserve and how the government as well. And by the way, those those two are not mutually exclusive. You know, people talk about the the Central Bank of the United States being a private institution, but it's only private to a certain extent. You know, how private can any entity be if its chair is has to get confirmed by the Senate and is appointed by the president? Most people don't think about that, but nonetheless this is what's happening. This is how our system is here in the United States. Are they independent? They're supposed to be, but we all know they're not. I'm going to be referencing an article here from Kidco and also one from Reuters that talks about this. And gold prices have fallen to session lows as Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell uh, had a very anticipated speech here and he struck a very hawkish tone. Powell reiterated that inflation remains the biggest threat to the economy and the central bank is committed to bringing consumer prices back down to its target. And what is its target? 2%. Now, there was a time in early 2020 when it went below 2%. And a lot of people gave the Trump administration credit for that. But in reality, it's because there wasn't as much cash uh, you know, being uh, spent at the beginning of the pandemic because people were kind of locked down and kind of hunkering down because of the virus. So therefore, inflation really didn't have much chance to really do anything. But let's think back for a moment here and talk about where inflation is now and where it was when last month's numbers came out. It was at 9.1, now it's 8.5. And that's the official numbers from the Consumer Price Index, which if we look at those numbers, that's just a... Um, a a measure, an average between different areas. But we all know that it's really higher than that, much higher for a lot of us out there, and double digits for sure. In fact, other measures of the way, used, the way they used to measure inflation, we'd be well into double digits now, especially when you take into account the producer price index, which is officially in double digits now. So if we think about where we are from a year ago to where we are now, even if we go back tomorrow, to 2% inflation or to 0% inflation, as the administration would like us to believe when they say we're at 0%, which is insanity how you can come, come up with that kind of figure. But even if we go to 0%, what does that mean? Does that mean prices are gonna go down? No, they're just not gonna fall or not, they're not gonna rise any more than they are right now. So anything that's gone up, and I'll give you an example. Uh, at the dollar store, when I go to the dollar store, and yes, I do go to the dollar store, there's some, you can find some good deals. Even today, you can still find some decent deals out there, but you can also be hoodwinked at the dollar store too. Do not buy a Hot Wheels car at the dollar store. If you buy a Hot Wheels uh, car at the dollar store, you are going to pay $1.25 now. Go to Walmart to buy your Hot Wheels. Believe it or not, Hot Wheels have not given into inflation. They're still 94 cents, at least in my area. But nonetheless, that's an, that's an aside point. Let me actually do a video about that because I think that's quite interesting. But nonetheless, um, you're still going to pay $1.25 for your good and service at the dollar store. They're not going to lower their prices back to a dollar at this point. They're just not going to raise them as fast. In fact, that 25 cents uh, is sort of a buffer zone because they know that Inflation was going to continue to keep rising. But nonetheless, gold and silver down today because of what he, he said about raising rates. 
Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive policy stance for some time. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy, he said in his remarks during the Central Bank Symposium. He's kind of stuck between a rock and another rock. Screw the hard place. We're talking about two rocks here. Powell noted that rising interest rates continue to slow growth. He added that those risks are outweighed by inflation. Not only that, but he's being pressured on the other side with more easy monetary policies from the government with spending money, and not only for this infrastructure or this, this supposed Inflation Reduction Act, which is, has nothing to do with inflation. It's really the Inflate Inflation Act, but also with this uh, executive order. Uh, that really should be challenged because I don't know that, that a president has the authority to target uh, monies towards any uh, particular end of group of people to forgive debts. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, it will also bring, bring some pain to households and businesses. These are unfortunate costs of reducing inflation, but a failure to restore policy st price stability would mean far greater pain, he said. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone, which is why it's foolish to not only raise taxes during a time of recession and inflation, but it's also foolish to spend money uh, from a government institution where they can just print it out of thin air. And who does that printing? It's the Federal Reserve. Although the U.S. economy is starting to feel the effects of rising interest rates, Powell said he continues to see pockets of strength. While the latest economic data have been mixed, in my view, our economy continues to show strong underlying momentum. The labor market is particularly strong, but it is clearly out of balance, he said. And by the way, he may be admitting to something that has been confirmed in other reports, and that is, is that the quality of the jobs that have been created have just are, are far below um, what is ideal. In other words, a lot of service, part-time jobs, second jobs for people, and working more hours with these second and third jobs where one person is counted for two or three jobs. That's not good, folks. In fact, I know I'm working two jobs, really in a sense three, um, and uh, that's kind of the nature of where we are at these days. Powell also recognized that while the central bank's monetary policy is slowing the economy, it is also bringing down inflation. But he added that way more work needs to be done. Although Powell has signed uh, that the a signal that the central bank will maintain its current aggressive tightening path, some analysts have said that his comments haven't provided much forward guidance for the markets. But they're reacting now, and I think he kind of knows that. Um, you know, the... But some of the mixed reactions, because the stock market's kind of been hurt a little bit by, by his comments, but so have the precious metals markets. Where are we at with the prices of precious metals? Well, in just minutes before the close of the bell here on this Friday, uh, gold is down 1.2%, and uh, silver is almost double that. It's down 2.08%. So gold will close somewhere near $1,738.80, Silver is below $19 an ounce now, $18.96. So that's where we are at with gold and silver. And now the Dow Jones Industrial Average has dropped over 1,000 points as I record this video. That's a huge drop. The markets are nervous. The NASDAQ is down almost 500 points. The S&P 500 is down 141 points. But the dollar is strengthening. It is up 0.33%. It's 108.81, and that's the thing here. That's what, that is the measure. That's how why gold and silver is falling now. And so, and that's what the Fed wants. The Fed wants a strong dollar um, in spite of, and that's one of their things that they do, is that they want to keep a, a stable dollar. And that may be a good idea to do, but they're doing everything in the wrong direction, or they have been in the past, and even so right now, you know, our dollar has nothing backing it other than fiat. What is fiat? Fiat is government decree, not central bank decree. Uh, but in a sense, people tie it to the central bank because it is a, after all, it is a Federal Reserve note, right? But what is Federal Reserve? Federal means government. That's right. So I don't fall, I don't really fall in line with what most people say that 
that the, that the Federal Reserve is some private institution. To me, it's a public institution. Um, and yes, they're unelected bureaucrats, but most of government is unelected bureaucrats, including the 87,000 IRS agents that are going to be coming after you and me. So let's look over here to what the Reuters is talking about here as well, too, with a little bit more recently uh, published article here after these prices kind of have settled in here. Uh, it could mean slower growth in the economy, but they did not hint on what the Fed might do in the September policy meeting. But more than likely, I think that they are going to raise rates at three quarters of a percentage point again, not a half point. And I believe that even after they do that, gold and silver will continue to fall at that point. Because there's not much foreign guidance there, uh, people are going to be basically um, uh, unsure and it will be surprised one way or the other when it happens. It would be good for the dollar either way, even if it's a half a percentage point. But I think they're going to do 75 basis points. Here's a quote from Tai Wong from senior trader Horaeus Precious Metals in New York. Equities and metals are suffering from Powell's unvarnished reminder that rates will need to be high for longer. And perhaps 75 basis points is a default for September, unless the totality of the data suggests otherwise. I don't think the data is going to suggest otherwise. He's looking at these employment numbers, and I think that is what's propelling him to be more hawkish. He sees employment numbers low, even though the quality of the employment data is low. And he pretty much admits that in the article that I referenced from Kitco. That means that we're going to see probably him push for higher uh, uh, interest rates and a hawkish would be the 75 basis points. And we know that gold is considered a hedge against economic risk and silver too. But this this statement by by our Federal Reserve Chair is not going to be mean anything for uh, the Silver Eagle or the Gold Eagle at any point in time as they, uh, you know, they're not swooping in anywhere. It's the hawk that's coming in and taking a bite out of gold and silver's price. And that's what's happening. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are. But that is manipulation. And, and whether it's in, intended or not, that is manipulation. That's what the Fed does. They manipulate the dollar and they've manipulated the dollar up and that pushes silver and gold down. Uh, yes, indeed. And that's not the free market. I know somebody made a comment in a previous video that a lot of what happens is kind of out of our control and not really the free market. And they're right to a point and to a degree, for sure. I agree with that. But nonetheless, I believe that in spite of the pressures and manipulation from the outside, uh, the free market here in the United States is pretty intuitive and pretty innovative. And uh, it's also resourceful and it's resilient. And that's what I have faith in. What is the faith that I have in? Gold and silver as entities that have proven themselves over time and time again. But even more so than gold and silver, I have faith in the American people and also the people of the world. You know, in some of these more uh, less free economies around the world where people are struggling to make ends meet, you know, I believe in them as well. Uh, and people have been successful in some other uh, agencies where they have some semblance of representative government. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.